Okay, I think we're live here. Let me confirm everything. We'll confirm we're live. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, we are live. We are live. We are live. Yeah. Are we on? Yeah, we are on. We are on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. So, welcome to the channel. I'm here with Osikeni TV here. Uh, you guys can also join the discussion. Uh, I'll provide the link in the comments box. Uh, one person is already in the room. We'll have more coming in. So today we're going to talk about uh, the Ghana Black Stars, the fallout from the two international games, the friendlies we've had, and everything about the team going forward. We are now looking forward to the World Cup. The next game uh, will be an international friendly versus Switzerland. But basically, that team will be the team that will face Portugal. So today what we are going to talk about, I'll run you through the program lineup is Otoado the man to lead us to the World Cup in Qatar yet I know it's just two months or a little over a month to the World Cup is that from your end I think it's a, a little over a month to the World Cup and to be asking this question is quite weird but it was because a lot of people were talking about the fact that uh, Otoado is a part-time coach looking to take charge of a full-time workout tournament so <laughs> i just need to get the opinion of Osikeni here then those who will come in we'll also be talking about thoughts on the nicaragua game what were your thoughts on that nicaragua game did you like what you saw was there something more you wanted to see and uh, is otoado trying to hide our tactics there's been this school of thought that otoado is intentionally making us look bad to make teams underrate us. Is that also what you think is happening? And who should be your starting, who would be your starting 11 for the Portugal game and that Switzerland friendly? Switzerland friendly will actually deal with that Portugal game. And I think the starting 11 will be there. Uh, so, Sigeni, thank you for coming on. I think the others will join us later. But okay. let me start off with you. Uh, a, few, my, a few weeks to the World Cup, I think six weeks mm. from home. Yeah. Mm. Is Otoado the man to do the job for us? Can he get us to the knockout phase? Okay, thank you for this um, opportunity. Once again, on your channel, yes, the biggest sports channel in Ghana, no doubt about it. Thank you. Um, good evening, Salasi. Good evening, all viewers across the globe. Um, Coach Otoado. Hmm. Yes, I would say he's the man because um, I wouldn't see it to be good if we go in for another person. So the only thing we can do now is to help him put him on the right path so that he will do what is expected of him. We all know the effort he put in before we beat Nigeria and he must put in the same efforts going forward to play in the World Cup. That is my only worry. Yes, so Ado qualified us to the World Cup. We thank him. He has done great. But we've seen coaches who qualify countries to World Cup and they are sacked the next day or the next the next minute they are sacked because the World Cup is soft. So Coach Otoado, I would say he is the man because currently, I will, it, like it will not be to me it will not be um, you know sensible to bring a new coach at this time. But we must help the man to succeed in Blasters. He's making so much. You know wrong decisions currently and i think we must help him put him on the right path and he can succeed he can qualify us from the group stage to the knockout phase but if we allow him to do what he's doing currently i doubt that he is the right man i doubt hmm. i'll say a big welcome to manuel Manuel, how are you doing yeah i'm good Salasi. yeah thank you thank you okay for let me read some few comments all right, let me read some few comments. Then Manuel, you pitch in with that question. Is Otoado the man? Sorry, Otoado is not the man from Ilala. And uh, Chances Mendo says he's not a coach, period. Stop calling him a coach. It's just a trainer scout. 
Okay, another one coming here from Yao Tando says, no coach can succeed under Ket Okreku. Interesting. Black Star Mamba says, anyone notice that Chris Hutting was on sideline for the Nigeria match? Um, Prince Ohene Jan says, there's no teamwork. Beko Richard says, trainer scout there. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it there. Henry Damang says he is good. Okay, so far, the only one agreeing that Otoado is the man for the job, Collins. Lache says, why should we have Chris Hutting and use Otoado? Uh, we've been here before. Manuel, your thoughts on this? We know it's six weeks to work up, and we are still talking about whether this is the man for the job, uh, but it needs to be talked about. Is Otoado the man to lead us out of the group stages, at least? Yeah, I agree with Osikani. I, I feel we have we have limited time for now to um uh to deliberate that uh Otado is not the man for the job. I think we have a lot of people. I think we can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, loud and clear. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I think for now we have to support him. Yeah. Uh we have a strong technical team behind him in the person of Chris Hilton. We have uh, Masil Didu Dramani. Then we have George Boatin. I think he's the man for the job. For now, we have limited time to talk about him leaving. Yeah, so I feel Otoado is the man for the job for now. Yeah, that's what I can say for now. All right, all right. Uh, another comment coming in. Otoado is good, but the World Cup is not the man. We have to go for Chris Hutton. Yeah, so the consensus is that Hutton probably should have got and and before Otto was officially appointed, most of you said it. Uh, we have to allow Otto to do the jobs from Selom. And you can join in and pitch in your comments later on. I think uh, at the half hour, that's 30 minutes, we'll allow the comments to come in from the fans as we did on Sunday. Uh, Ghanaians can talk, that's from Max Tando. Are we still forgotten where this man picked us? We always have issues with every coach. Although saying he's not a coach, can you coach a primary school team? <laughs> he has not. This is his first official job as a head coach. And uh, if anyone will be honest with ourselves, I think any experience in this position is not experienced in being a head coach of a national team, for example, a club side. So uh, those saying that uh, probably are justified in that respect. And final comment here. Let me read it before we move on. Supreme Court says, my biggest issue with Otoado is how he has other responsibilities, which can easily affect the quality of his technical decisions. But the time is so short to change things. Yes, I think uh, some sort of distraction is what he's talking about there. Let me drop the link for you to join the room here and voice your opinion in the comments it's there now you can join it there so uh most of you agree it's too late to make any change now otuado let's stick and stay with him and try to get over the line with him now there's this school of thought going around otuado is intentionally making us look bad otuado is intentionally making us look bad so that he can hide our tactics from other countries that are watching us especially our groups i don't think that is the case what do you think this school of thoughts does it hold any water let me start from manuel yeah please come again uh, there are those saying that otuado is intentionally making us look bad during these friendlies uh, to sort of hide our tactics in the main tournaments from others uh, do you think that this holds any water is, it, is this valid a valid argument or statement that's going around Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think he's making us look bad. I think the problem we have now is uh, players. Yeah, I feel yeah. some of them don't want to play as a team. They don't want to play as a team. Looking at the Nicaragua game, we have the individual qualities. But you see, on the pitch, you, you don't just play as an individual. You play as a team. And that's what our boys lack. And I feel Otto needs to 
side them well uh, with the help of Chris Hilton. I think he can do that. He can help him do that. So I I don't I don't side with those people saying that he's maybe probably this craziness or something. But I feel okay. it's it's a problem of the guys. They should be ready to play as a team and to yeah. help raise the flag of Ghana high. Yeah, that's what I feel. I think. Uh, and, and that being said, I have to also say that this was the first time most of these players were playing together. So uh, that team chemistry will take time, understanding of each other's movements, it will take time. So probably a bit too harsh to say that uh, the team is not doing well or the team will fail at the World Cup. But let me get uh, Ozekeni your opinion on that, then we move on. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I also don't believe that it's intentionally making us look bad. I think one coach Otoado has problems with taking decisions. Yes, um, against Brazil, you can say that he intentionally did that because we understood there were scouts there. But what about that second half that you make changes and play your actual formation? Let's say if that is what we are going in with, with the three back. Does it mean that at that time the scout didn't see the team? No. I think he's, he's you know, in the midst of what I call it frustrations. Looking at the game against Nicaragua, that is where I assessed him better. There may not be um, that good team bonding or cohesion or chemistry in there. But against Nicaragua, it's a team or a, a match that you can actually test your players. Now you called or you invited Stefan Ambrosius. You invited um, Yebua Konis Dofe. You invited Efriye Banye. You invited Elisha Wusu. You invited some um, Joseph Edu and some other players that I feel they did not get enough minutes to prove what they can also do. I don't think Nicaragua's team is all that great team that Coach Otoado was, was afraid to make changes. I feel he, at a point in time, he was even trying to defend a one goal. That is why yeah, a coach can yeah. make change at 90 plus two, almost 90 plus three minutes. I only see them in teams that are trying to, you know, avoid an equalizer or something, then they will, they will use it to consume time. Because, I, like, I didn't understand it. He, he, like, he is not the man who is able to take that kind of bold decisions during the game. And his first half is ever a suspect. Since he took charge, his first half has never been convincing to any Ghanaian. So all these things are making Ghanaians panic ahead of the World Cup. Not that he's intentionally making us look, look bad. Against Madagascar, we saw it in Cape Coast. First half, Ghana was under tension. We are playing at home against Madagascar. The likes of Rakuto Haimalala, players who have never traveled before. And you cannot beat them in first half. So what about if you go into a match in first half, you lose by a goal to nil against a disciplined team, a team that can defend well. Coming back will always be a problem. So he's not convincing us enough. Not that he's intentionally making us look bad. I don't think against Brazil, he intentionally did that. That was his approach to the game and it failed. So to me, I'm that person that I feel he must be helped. He must, let's say, if Chris Hutin is the man who has to help him, at first, maybe if you give him advice at halftime, now we should add him to the to, 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 to those who, 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 will be, who will be taking decisions before the match itself. He should be involved in the selection. He should be involved in everything that Otoadu should do. Otoadu must need help because looking at his duties at Dortmund, I don't think it is giving him that enough time to think about the national team. He must be able to think about the national team at least eight to ten hours a day. And right now, going back to Dortmund, he has a lot of assignments there to do. So what assurance do we have that he's still going to think about the national team and think about how the players can bond and all? So I think there is a lot of issues that we really need to speak to. And I don't think he intentionally does look bad. I don't believe in that score. All right, all right, all right. And there's a lot of interesting comments coming in here and uh, it's clear that 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 is total bs he's not intentionally making us look bad it's also clear that the team is new the players are new they are getting to know each other so it takes some time it's not going to be magic that they will gel and start playing and scoring goals left right center mind you the teams we are playing against have been together for a long time and they know each other well ghana just called some players in who are new my only problem with otuado is that he did not allow some players to play in the friendly this was an international friendly uh, more players should have been given a chance to play let me read some comments then we move on uh, to who should um be in your final 
11, that will face uh, Portugal because that's the game we are looking at. Looking at the two friendies, your lineup, I'll get that from you. So let me read the comments preparing for that one. In the past, former assistants have become Black Stars head coach. As a coach, you are paid well. Insults should not be a problem for them. They make in the month what an average Canadian make in a year. Well, you can be right on that, but it still doesn't warrant insults, in my opinion. Mm. Insults shouldn't be condoned. And let's let's keep it civil here. Our previous World Cup squad played together uh, during Afcon. Don't forget that we still have one more friendly. I I see that friendly as. Um, sort of a preparation for that game it's it's yeah. too close it's yeah, too it's close and i think games. before that friendly the World Cup scores would have been submitted so sure it will be it will be interesting what at all do we want let me read it here let me put it here what at all do we want i think we should keep quiet and allow the coach to work uh, that's from maxwell Donko maxwell is posting a lot of comments here let me read noah arthur Ghanaians will always insult get Mourinho or pep and they will still insult them <laughs> another one coming in from harry saying Ghanaians don't know what they want in general and it cuts across all sectors we never settle with anything and when our choices do not deliver we blame something or someone else okay so you can join the conversation by video 7 30 p.m gmt you can join us here for the stream yard link i just posted again you can join us and air your comments by video okay so i move to my next topic the next game is switzerland it's very close to the world cup itself a week to that um portugal game yeah 2017 i think that same day to nigeria playing portugal so it's just a week to that game um can we look at your starting lineup for that game? Starting 11. Looking at the two friendlies, I think by now, Otto has said that 70% of the players that played in the friendlies will go to Qatar. So let me let me just hear you on your final 11, because this is the team that probably will face Portugal. So if you watch that game, if you watch Portugal's game versus Nigeria, I'm sure we'll also get our starting 11. If you watch Ghana versus Switzerland will be at the starting eleven. Who are those that will start in that game? Also, can you kick off for me? Oh, okay. So, um, thank you for this, um, you know, brilliant question. In fact, wow. I have my first eleven. I don't even know if Coach Otoado has his. Yes, I believe he has. His. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I be. I believe. I strongly believe he has it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> this first 11 I'm going to give, I think so far this is the best team I can assemble, and I know about 90% of Ghanaians are going to agree with me. Okay. okay, so let me begin it this way now. Um, in post, in uh -huh. post um, we have Jojo Wallacott and uh, Richard Ofori. Now, perhaps Richard Ofori has given us against Nicaragua. Yes, Nicaragua is not a side that we can say that they really tested us that much. And um, yeah, but I feel when Ofori was imposed, he was able to command his line well. He was able to, you know, position the defenders, shout at them when they need be, and a lot. And I think I would like to keep the Ofori imposed for now. I want Jojo okay. to prove to me why he deserved that starting place. And um, yes, when do you want to see him prove? Because uh, the hmm. next game is basically yes. the game we are going yeah. to play, and so, uh, so there's no time. So, <laughs> so if Ofori should play against um, Switzerland and perform well, Switzerland is a dangerous side. If he's able to face all those guys and he doesn't concede bad goals, I think I will still stick with him. If, um, let's say, Joe Dwarakot also faces Switzerland, then he, he actually turns my mind, then I will still go in for Jojo. But for now, I will stick with Richard Ofori in post for the Black Ofori. Stars in Ghana. Okay. Yes. Now, I'll go with the threat right. back. I'll go with the three back as usual. The three back, I think Ghanaians right now we are we are loving our three back, but the coach is telling us that he don't want to be going into the games with three back. He wants to go with the four back because we've seen it twice against Brazil and against the car. But I will go with the three back, and I will start with um uh -huh. Salisu on the left, um then Amate will be on the right, uh -huh. and 
Alexander Jiko will be in between the two. So that will be my three back. Uh -huh. Then um, my formation is three five one one formation. Three five one one formation. Okay. Then, um, in the middle, in the rings, um, the right ring, I'll give it to Tariq Lamte because of how PC the Portuguese team is. Imagine you have the likes of Rafael Liel, um, Munoz, and the other players out running your flanks, and um, you need players who can actually run or who have pace to control them. So I'll go in with Tariq Lamte on the right ring position. Okay. Then on the left ring, I want Ghana to still chase for Jeffrey Schlock. I want Ghana to still chase for just let's not build castles in the air. Let's let's work with what we have. <laughs> if anything yeah, changes, okay. then <laughs> okay. so let's so work with let's stick with yeah. our lineups. Okay, so working with what we have, then I will keep Gideon Mensah on the left wing position. I think his defensive work is more than Baba Abdurrahman's own, and I'll love to keep him there. So I'll give yeah. him for him. Then in the middle, the three in the middle, first of all. I'll go with, um, in the absence of Salis, I wanted to go with Salis, but if you are going with what we have now, then I'm going to give it to um, a player like Elisha Ousu. Elisha Ousu, unless Baba Idrisu improves a lot in the games he's going to play in the Spanish Arena for LCD Maloka. So I'll go with Elisha Ousu. Then um, I'm going to put Pate, Thomas Pate, on the right side of the uh, midfield. Then uh -huh. on the left side, the midfield three. I will finish all off with Daniel Kufichre. So in the middle, I'll have, um, first of all, Elisha Usu, then Pate and Kufichre. Then up okay. front, I'm going to go with the 1-1. One, one. So as I said, 3-5, 1-1 one, one formation. The 1-1, one, one, I have Kudus Mohamed, who will sit um, in front of the mess field. So Kudus Mohamed, I'll give him that role. Then Inyaki Williams will lead the lines for us. So the 1-1 one, one formation, sometimes Inyaki will shift so, to the right so they can interchange so they can interchange yes so i'll go with that Interesting one. Right and up. so um impose ofori um amate jikus asalishu media mesa tarik pate elisha usu daniel kofichere kudus muhammad and inyaki williams this is my 11 for the black stars of ghana against portugal that is if the coach would like it <laughs> Manuel, run us through your lineup before the fans come in. Okay, so for me, I'll put Richard Ofori in post. Yeah, to me, I feel he has before a lot to do. I yeah. think Ofori, the system Otto likes to play is more, more or less play from the back. Ofori, uh -huh. has he convinced you about his ball playing skills on the ball from the back? Has he convinced you enough looking at the two the friendly he played in versus Nicaragua? Uh, for me, I think he's okay. He's okay. okay. Um he has oh, that commanding. Yeah. Yeah, well, for it for me. Yeah, well, for it for me. And I, I feel he has a lot to prove to us. Yeah. Against mm. Nicaragua, we didn't see a lot of him. And I feel against Switzerland, yeah, he has to prove to us that he deserves the call up. So right. I'll put Richard Ofori in post. Then mm -hmm. I'll go for the three back system. We have Jiku in the middle, mm -hmm. Salisu on the left, then Amate on the right. Then um with the right back, I'll go for Tariq Lamte. Yeah, because against a team like Portugal, you 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 need someone who is very fast and someone who can also search forward and give very good crosses. Mm -hmm out there and i'll go in for gideon mensa we don't have slop we are working with what we have so i'll go in for gideon mensa ahead of baba raman then thomas Pate sits just in front of the back three as our dm then daniel kofitre there with him with kudus muhammad as our number 10. then on the right i'll play Jordan are you on the right, then Kamal Din Sulemana on the left, then Inaki Williams leads the attack for us. Oh interesting. So Pate Tre Kudus. Yeah. Kudus, yeah. Let me see one, two, three, four. Then Jordan. Jordan on the right. Kamal Din on the left. No, no, if you add Kamal Din, it will be 12 players. 
Let me do one, two, three. One, two, three, six plus. So I went in for Richard Ofori in post. Mm -hmm. Jiku Amate Salisu, right? Mm -hmm. Then Gideon Mensa on the left, Tarek on the right, Thomas Pate as the DM, Daniel Kofichre, then Kudus. Kudus Mohammed, Inaki Williams, then Jordan Ayu. So, okay. yeah, so I'll use. I'll use um, Kudus as a false nine. Then Inaki comes in to the right. Then we have Jordan on the left. Oh, okay. You still yeah. you, you you interested in Jordan? Yeah, I like Jordan. So three mm. fourth reformation. Yeah. So what about Jordan? Made you add him here? Let me just get your understanding of your your. Yeah. Your wait, 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 wait. What uh, Osman Bukari did against uh, Nicaragua? I feel. Jordan has a lot. Jordan has a lot. Yeah, he he involves himself in the game. Um, he involves himself in the play. He comes back to tack uh, to help in the defense. But wait, Osman Bukari, he's just up there. You don't see him much in the game. When he gets the ball, you don't see him making giving uh, good passes and all that. But I feel Jordan involves himself in the game and. I will prefer Jordan ahead of Usman Bukhari. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so in the next four minutes, the the first person to talk, uh, I'll give the opportunity mm. to Felix Chidi. Then Hoops will go next. Then Ni Lala, you are the third that will go. So uh, that's at in three minutes' time. Felix will kick things off. So we'll go through the lineups that I've been giving. Interesting lineups. Jordan. In Manuel's lineup, Jordan Iñaki to probably lead the line. Kudus, Kudus, Tre, and Pate in midfield. Then Tariq, Gideon Mensa, Amate, Jiku Salisu, and Richard Ofori in post. This is your starting eleven to face uh, Portugal in that first game, and it's it's not it's not going to be uh, an easy game for us. So. We need our very best on the night. Uh, so the final 26, uh, before the fans come in, let me get this. The final 26, aside your starting 11, uh, which three players should we still add to this? If Let me see your three substitutes. Manuel. Yeah. Let me see three players you would add to the substitute bench from your 11. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, Andre Ayu should be on the bench. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then Kamal Din. Okay. Kamal Din Sulemana. Then if we have Jeffrey Schlopp hmm. or Callum Hudson Odoi. <laughs> yeah, are we dealing with the ones we have? Or? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, so so or no scoring is a big problem for Ghana. <laughs> uh, can you wrap wrap that one up before Felix uh, comes? Yeah, in? yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, I'll add Andrea, you the captain for the side, who can also motivate the team. Add a lot of, um, you know, whatever we need him. So I'll add him. Then I'll also add Anthony Semenyo. Yes, and um, then I'll also add Baba Idrisu to the bench. So Baba Idrisu, Anthony Semenyo, and Andrea, you will be my next cast to play cast. in the game all right all right all right that's that's full lineup full starting game okay so felix you are on let me add you to the stream welcome to sahara football thank you for joining us so let me get your thoughts on these topics is otoaru the man are you confident after the two friendlies and who would you not want to travel to Qatar after watching the international friendlies? Because 27 <laughs> players were called, a minimum of two or three will be omitted. 29, actually. Three will be omitted. So who do you not want to see after watching but, the international friendlies? First of all, I would like to commend you guys. You all do a great job on your individual channels. And when you come together, you do a great job. I'd like to commend you on that. 
Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I think as Ghanaians, we are a football loving nation and we we are very passionate about our football team. And since the Karen Cup to the last uh, game against Nicaragua, Nicaragua, the coach has not been impressive. However, he is who we've got. And the players that um, he's called are those we have. And I, I think we should give them the chance and throw our support behind them and right. hope that when the tournament gets here, they will be fit and prepared enough to give us our best and raise our flag high. That's all I have to say. But let's be patient with them. Okay. So we should be patient with the coach. Uh, thoughts on the friendlies, after the friendlies, what are your thoughts on the team going into the World Cup? I think that's the team we have. I am. Mm -hmm. I, I feel strongly about the team. I think they just need a little bit more cohesion. Um, for instance, the midfield and the attack, there seems to be a missing link between the midfield and the attack. It doesn't matter who is, who is the attacking uh, player, whether it's in Nike striker, or yeah. Uh, yeah, a striker, whether it's in Nike or Jordan or whoever, the communication between the midfield and the attack is where I think our biggest problem is. We have a great defense. Where, with the addition of Salisu, I think that yeah, a great defense, but it's lacking in the attack and midfield. Yes, the midfield is where the game is played. But the communication between the midfield and the attack is where I think we are lacking. And that is where I would concentrate my energy um, as a coach trying to uh, uh, get them to understand each other. But we don't have time anymore to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and this is a relatively new team with new players mm -hmm. playing together for the first time. So right. it's, it's, it's not easy at all. Mm. Uh, we call 29 players for the friendlies. Uh, who would you not want to see in Qatar? Because Otto will have to remove at least three. I, I don't have anybody I want to take out, right? I, I don't want to get into that. Okay, one thing, okay. I, will, one, one thing I will add, though, mm -hmm. is the issue of um, the coach being a part-time coach. I think if he maintains communication with the technical team as well as the players during this uh, break until they meet uh, for the Switzerland game, if he can maintain communication with them, mm -hmm. I think we'll do fine. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, Felix. Thank you for joining us. Nila, La, you are next. Let me add you to the stream. Can you pause it for me? Hey, hello. Yeah, welcome to the I'll... channel. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, okay. it's, it's good to so see you guys. I've, I've subscribed to all your channels, and you guys are doing a very great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you too. Thank you, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So we've watched the friendlies. Yes. Is Otuado has he convinced you enough? First of all. First of all, this this issue has nothing to do with Otuado. It starts from the top, the GFA. <laughs> we can clearly see it. And to say Otuado is the right or bad man for the job, I think whether it's yes or no, we still have work to do. If we take Otuado out. Probably we're going to break uh, Chris Hilton, which is a better replacement, in my opinion, because the only problem I have with Otoado is he has not taken this job as a job that he would put his all in doing. He's currently the uh, scout manager whatsoever in Dortmund, which I think does not give him a good or uh, uh, ample time for him to check up on the players, go to their leagues to watch the players play. Because if you see what other coaches are doing, before the Brazil-Ghana game, the Brazilian coach went to see Gabriel Jesus, Martin Eli, when they played against Manchester United. He went to the stadium to see them, to watch them play. 
Otto Hado, I don't think, has gone to see any player in the league, playing in the leagues to watch them play. And in a recent interview, he said what they do is they have a Zoom meeting occasionally and they discuss <laughs> it. What do you mean you have a Zoom meeting? <laughs> I hope you know that interview. That's what he's told. Uh, I, 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 I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. He used white scout, white scout and all those things to be ex analyzing. Exactly. And they do but it late other, in the night when he comes home and the kids are asleep. It's 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 not gonna work. That's not how coaches pick their players. They go to the the the, the games and they have to watch the players play. That is when they make a better decision because Southgate said the only way you join the team is if you are playing consistently in your league game. Now come come to Ghana, the call ups that were made. We had Afenajan. And the game against Brazil was the longest minute he has played this season. Can you imagine you, your top striker, <laughs> going into a game against Brazil and he hasn't played a total of 30 minutes in the whole season? How is he going to face Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, Eda Militao? That is not a magician performance. This is football. It has become so yeah. tactical. You have to be and scientific. Yeah, yeah. It, you can't just put a player in the game, wishing for a spectacle when you haven't seen the player perform. I was happy we called Afrejan when he was at the peak. It was a motivation. It boosted him, and he performed. In my opinion, he performed in the game against Nigeria and uh, Kumasi. He did marvelously well. He was one of the best. I had really high hopes for him. But what has brought him down is the fact that he's not getting regular playing time. Yeah. And if he's not, the national team is not a place for him to get it. He won't give us the expectations that we need. So unfortunately, the 26 man squad that we are going for the World Cup, I, I hope that Afghanistan gets dropped. That is one. I I don't think we do need to put him in a place where we have high hopes for him and probably he gets us disappointed i would i have seen players like um we had this player who won the national uh the golden boots in uh the under 20 where we won uh, adia dominic adia, adia. 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 same place yeah. with dominic adia with high hopes and just one flop we missed the guy now we don't know where adia is we had no idea. He's in Thailand or something. Thailand. <laughs> just look at that. And this is the guy who won the under 20 golden boot. But now he's in Thailand because the expectations were too high. He wasn't getting playing time in AC Milan and whatsoever. The playing time helps. And if you are not getting it in the, the leagues, there is no need to be in the national team. It just doesn't make sense. And it's the same with Babara, man. I would... I have never seen Babaraman perform. I'm sorry, but I have never seen him perform in any game. It's it's surprising how he keeps getting collapse because this guy, trust me, I've I've not seen. <laughs> anyway, so the players I'm dropping from that squad after the gym, Babaraman, and from the um, Benjamin Teta removes himself with an injury from the twenty nine hours. Yeah, I, actually, I was. I wouldn't say happy, but <laughs> okay, it's bad to say that, but oh yeah. my goodness, Benjamin Tete has not got an assist. I think he has one assist, no goal. Yeah, for Hall City. Yeah, yeah no goal. one assist, no goal in about six nine, matches. Nine, nine, nine matches or something. Nine yeah. matches. <laughs> and we have Bernard Tepete playing UFI, UFI Europa League, playing the league and playing at least 70 minutes every game or 80 minutes and scoring and he doesn't get a call up i hmm. i find it baffling that this is happening it's it's totally ununderstandable i just don't get the sense so bernard uh benjamin teta is automatically out we also have uh baba raman i would take baba raman out afenajan out doubtfully i think these guys might go i probably think uh Yeboah might be dropped. I don't want him to be dropped, but I think, he, I think he might be dropped. 
And of course, let's face it, a free year ban here will be dropped. Taking the, lo the only local player to the friendlies and giving him two minutes of playing two time is, is so insulting. <laughs> it's really, really insulting to the national league. So today, Osikani has said so many things that I don't agree. Usually, I like commenting. I like commenting positives, but Osikani has disappointed me with two comments. First, he said Otto is the man. I... <laughs> it's too late. It's too late for us to do anything. Anything, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. He's, so he's I agree late. with Osikani yeah. that he should be the man to take us, but taking us, the only hope I have is we play three games. I hope we score at least two or three goals. And right. from that, that's just I can that's what I can say. Okay. I think Richard Ofori, I don't think anyone here has seen Richard Ofori in more than 60 minutes or 90 minutes of a game. George Wala caught less faces. We are treating him the way we treated Adam Korase. Oh, he doesn't talk, he doesn't speak tree, he cannot command, and all that. But Adam <laughs> Korase was That's one true. of the finest play, one finest goalkeepers we goalkeepers saw. Goalkeepers at the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we are treating him the same way. He cannot speak tree, he doesn't talk a lot. If the defenders are doing the right thing, I think it will make his job easier. If you watch Ghana Kumaro's game, he made two spectacular saves that the match could have easily ended in a 5-3 or 5-2. And in the Brazilian game, of course, it's Brazil. What do you expect? But he made some saves. In the second so, half. Exactly. I would obviously go with Wallach. Yeah. All right. So All right. I know mm -hmm. others have to talk. Okay. Thank you guys for, for joining yeah. us. All right, all right. Thank you, Nilala. And so, oh, Hoops, are you ready to talk? You were supposed to go. After Hoops, Le Patron, get ready. You are next. Let me add Hoops to the stream. Hello. And then Harry will go. And Supreme Quartz, you are next after that. Yeah, you are on Hoops. Yeah, one he's was a the man. man. No, he, he's the man. He's the man. Okay. He's the man. Let me all be right, honest right. with you. I have no... I have no qualms with his tactics. All right. I have qualms with his selection because Amate should not be playing. Let's be, let's admit it. He's not. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. yeah, you're on, you're on. Amate doesn't even play for Leicester. Mm -hmm. We should not be bringing somebody who doesn't have enough game time. I would even take somebody from the local leagues. Who who come and play and have game time? Uh, who has game time rather than Amate? Because we can't be showing favoritism because Amate gets favoritism. No offense, the IU brothers get too much favoritism. They are good, but they are not good enough to warrant this kind of favoritism. Maybe Dede, but I'm sorry, Jordan is not good enough to warrant this kind of favoritism. No no player at this current moment, because of our bad performance, is good enough to warrant this kind of favoritism. We we need to stop calling up Baba Rahman because he can't perform. And and Afenaja, I have no problem with calling up Afenaja because he he I have no problem with him or Ransford because they are the future. So we need to nurture them properly. It's our job to also nurture them as much as it's their club because our future actually looks very bright. But we we cannot. On one hand, nurture uh, what do you call? We can we cannot on the other hand allow old players because they've given us their loyalty. They are not quality enough to come and play. For. I, I don't want to sound I don't want to sound rude, but we have to stop playing uh, what do you call Amate or or Raman. Who should we play in Amate instead? Hmm? Who should we play in Amate instead? Um, I, I think we should play the four back position and just put Ambrosia as a as a as a substitute and get another person to play in his stead. Be because I I understand Amate used to. I'll be honest with you. Twenty nineteen, he used to be our best defender. I, I'm not going to lie to you. He actually used to be our best defender, but he he's not getting enough playing time or doing enough in Leicester City to warrant us to call back, call him back. If he was, if he, if we stop calling him up so much, 
and he started thinking, oh, the Ghanaian team, they're not calling me because I'm not performing. Maybe you start performing. And even even that, uh, I have a problem with the Jordan IU. It's it's either we play him up top or we don't play him at all. We should stop playing him on the wings? No, on the wings or in the middle. He should play up top or not play at all because he's too lazy. Let me be be honest with you. He's too lazy to want to do anything else. He he needs to play in in central attacking like a striker and Inaki doesn't get enough goals for us to make him a striker we need to bring him back play Jordan in the front and allow Inaki Williams to play him in because Inaki is not prophetic but he does create chances and create space we can use that to our advantage and allow Jordan Ayu to do his job Jordan or Dede because each one is prolific enough for me I would say Jordan now because he's he's I would say better now because Dede is not playing at the top beat. But <laughs> but we we need to allow and also the last point is that the last point I have is that our midfield is is too gifted to allow us to continue playing Idrisu Baba or Baba Idrisu. I, I forget where the we, I'm I'm sorry, he, he's he's not bad no. but but Eli- Elijah Wusu, um, yeah, and other players, Salis, Salis Samed, do enough to be called back, to be called up to do the job. They do enough to take over his position. Elijah Wusu gets too much hate, in my opinion. Or not hate, but not enough recognition. Attention, yes. He doesn't get not be in the midfield. I think it's because he plays for a West team. I, I don't care if he plays for a West. If he can get the job done, I feel he should be in there. He Thank should be you. in. I think there are more people in hoops. Thank you so much for your input. You think Otoado is the man? It's too late to get him out or to yes, get it's, it's, else. It's, it's too late. It's yes. too late. All right, all right. Thank we you swallow, so much. We have to swallow our pride and take it in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Le Patron. And next, let me add you to the stream. Thank you for joining us. It's Good evening, fun. guys. Yeah. Sikeni. Sikeni. I'm, I'm waiting for money. I'm waiting for money. <laughs> yes, 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 I was. It will drop. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh-huh. Regarding Otoado, listen. Yeah. We, we've made our bed. As the Englishman say, you made your bed, now you go lie in it. <laughs> yeah. Right rather than rather than we discourage him. I went I went to the game on um on Tuesday. I watched the game live. Rather than we discourage him, it's, the man's got a good heart. You could tell he's trying to do the job. You know, he's trying his best. So maybe you know in Ghana. We want everything now, 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 now. now, now. Maybe now, a little bit. Now. Yes. <laughs> it may be now. I look at the guy. He's got passion. He means well. He's got a good heart. I mean, before, I wasn't really impressed. But when you see a man on the touchline and he's frustrated, he, he wants, he's got passion. He's got a passion about him. So we need to just get an experienced manager. Instead of Boatin being number two, George Boatin being number two, less... Um, Chris, be his number two, and Chris to mentor him. You understand? You know, he, Chris, and remember, in manage, mm. management world, so age, Chris is going on a bit now, you know. So let's just get Chris as number two, instead of being a technical director, number two, where he stand next to Otto and say, Otto, do this, do this, do this, do that. Look, let's, do you know what I mean? But we've put an ex under 21, Aston Villa under 21 manager in charge with Otoado. It's not going to work. It's like, it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> you know? So yeah, let's get know, along, alongside know. him. Alongside him, let's get instead of um, Chris Hewitt be the technical director sitting somewhere with a walkie talkie, oh. let's, put him, let's put him with him on the bench. You know, yeah, and you see, 
It, it will help. You help Otto. It's learning. It's learning. We got give. We got give him time. All right. Right. Uh, I went to the game. One, no, no. Second one on Otto. Another one on Otto. Some say a part-time coach. Do you think the part-time is something that will affect us? Or that's yeah. Really that's 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 what i'm saying because i know i know chris has been doing scouting going around england doing scouting watching games yeah. Yeah. right so that's what i'm saying well, if he's yeah. doing it part-time let's yeah. get chris next to him on the bench uh, and chris could when chris said look do this do this he will listen because uh, he's talking about a man of experience rather than just to say all right you know good go 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 Let's get experienced person next to him to mentor him. Mentor him because right. now the guy has passion. I, I, I could tell the guy has passion. He was frustrated. He was if we got an experienced guy next to him, he would do well. Okay. Honestly, so he, he would do well. He would listen onto the game and the team. Oh. You thoughts. see, hmm. Ghana, we always praise him, praise him, and then crucify him. That's our life. We just like we just like the British. The same. <laughs> Jojo, Jojo, Jojo Wallacott, for me, has to be the goalkeeper. If you watch the game on Tuesday, Ofori made Paris. That was an experienced team. They would have they would have beaten us. Two errors where he passed the ball short. He's not he's not good keeper, he talks a lot, but he's not good with his feet. And if we want to play from the back, then of course it's not the the right choice. Okay. Okay. Right. If we're gonna play three at the back, Amate Juku Salisu. If we play that, we means we want to pass from the back. We want to start build up from the back. Yes, and which it worked, it worked because the second half Brazil, it yeah. seems to be working. And I think the goalkeeper had more confidence. Because if you watch the game, as soon as watch Salisu, as soon as goalkeeper got the ball, Salisu goes wide. Where in the first half in Brazil, when goalkeeper got the ball, no one's coming in for the ball. No central defender was making space. So he received the ball. I don't know about that because they were panicking because it's Brazil, they hit number one. But if we're going to play free at the back, then the left back has to be Gideon Mensa. The reason why I'm saying that because Gideon is good at attacking and he's, he's young as well. So it work, the defensive side will come with the right coaching, right encouragement. He'll be a fantastic left back. So if we play free at the back, you can't play Baba Rahman. You have to play Gideon Mensa. Gideon Mensa. Oh, but up front, goal scoring is a problem for Ghana. In your opinion, how do we remedy that? Massa. <laughs> that means we like to, when we see a new player, hey, hey, <laughs> Ilaki Williams, Ilaki Williams is a good is a good player. I'm not saying he's a bad player, he's a good player, but yeah, the guy missed out there, he missed an own open goal. Mm. He liked that, he lacked the technical side of the game. Look. If you're going to play Naki like Williams, the ball has to go over the top for him to run on. And then with, with five one-on-ones, he'll get you one goal. With five attempts, he'll get you one goal. That's what I saw in the player. Right? That's true. That's true. I, I will go for... Do you know what? The guy who came on earlier was saying um, Jordan. I will play Jordan with Semenyo up front. Inaki out. Inaki out on the bench. Do, do you know why I was saying Inaki out on the bench? Why? Right. Jordan, who's very experienced, he could draw fouls on the edge of the box. He's very clever, experienced. Yeah. So if you play Semenyo with Jordan, you got experience and you got pace and power. He'll say to Semenyo, hey. Hold it, hold it, time it. Go wide, go wide. Kaim, I'm gonna. You know what I mean? He will talk to. He will talk to Semenyo. He will know what to do. So you need experience up front. You can't put two 
Inaki and Semenyo are the focus. Semenyo on Saturday was making runs and he wasn't getting the ball. Inaki was, was making runs, but his running was wrong. At one time, the ball was going to Osman, the left winger. Inaki was making the run towards the ball when the ball wasn't even his. The ball was Osman's ball to pick up. And so that brings maybe, us back to the, the point about this being a new team and then getting to know each other. Don't you think that's more of an explanation for that than the fact that Inaki is a bad runner and reading of the no, game? They know no. each other. Is that not why Listen, it is like that? They want to be international. You call yourself an international player from <laughs> for the youth academy. You should know when a boy is running on the left, it's for the left winger to run and chase, not for you to go across and try and get the ball. Stay in your position. If you do that in Pep, Pep's team at Man City, you're off. He did that to Trini Henry. He told Henry, stay wide, stay wide. Henry went in the middle. He got to go. Half time, he took Henry off. He goes, that's not your job. Fair point. As, as a striker, when the ball's going down the wing and the winger is running to it, you don't go in the same direction. This is basic. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's basic. So wrap, 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 up us, wrap up for us because there are more people wanting to okay. so wrap up for us. Right back, I'll go for Tariq Lamte or Alidu. Okay, Alidu Siedu. I like that guy. I, li I like that guy. It's something about that guy. There is something about that guy. I like that guy. Um, the middle, yeah. Elisha Owusu. Okay, um, listen, I, I will put any money on it this guy would be the main man everyone is missing a trick but elisha we should we don't need that other method that people are saying it should come listen black star should be an honor for you to be play for black star not to be begged and forced for you to come i, I agree I so the day you start for experience and kudos and then we could take Kudus off, put Kofitre in there. If the day is getting tired, we could take the day off, put Pate in there. Jordan is getting tired. Jordan comes off. And then um, Inaki will come on with his speed. So you got to you got to alter the speed. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And, the, and you can't put all attacking players at one time. You have to switch a bit. So when the opponent is getting tired, you bring pace at pace to the front. Okay, okay. okay. Who would I drop? Yeboah. Yeboah, when is that one? The, the young boy that was called up. But you never watched him. So what, on what basis are you dropping him? Oh, Masha. Nifishi, 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 Nifishi. Let him go and play under 20 game. <laughs> <laughs> Let him play under 21st and get experience to come. Ah, cut a oh, school boy, player. <laughs> no, 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Le Patron. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bossage. <laughs> All right. Harry, you are next. Then, Supreme, uh, what? You go. Harry. Hello, guys. Good evening. Yeah, hey, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, so, I watched the two games and... Um, Ghana, our national team have a problem. We have a, a, a problem even on corner kick and throw in minor, minor things that um, every team should have. If you look at back in 2019, one of the reasons why Liverpool won against Barcelona, if you watch the Champions League, was um, what do you call it? Um, the corner kick that happened. And Monarchy that was something aim. that have been. Uh, sorry, the quick corner kick you're talking about. Right? The quick corner kick, and yeah. if you look at Liverpool games, they don't delay when it comes to corner kicks. Mm. Now, who is our corner taker in the national team? Jordan, he's a striker, he, and he's even tall. He should be there <laughs> to head the balls and all those things, but he is the one kicking the balls and free kicks. Which is wrong. So our national team in general have a problem. For the past, it's not about Otoado. For the past, I don't know, couple of years, 
we complain about the same problem, which is our strikers are not scoring goals. Oh, our strikers are not scoring goals. And we know the problem, but we cannot solve it. Are you telling me that Ghana, we don't have players who can do that job? We do. But finding the Name right players. Us. Name them for us. For Here's example, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you my team. Okay. I'm going to tell you my team. But we, we know our problems. And looking at my team, I'm going to put Wala Kodde as the goalkeeper. I'm going to bench... Reason? Um, the well, reason being... This debate about Fori being better than Wala Kodde, why are you sticking with him? No, I'm sticking with him because he can play from the back. That's the system we are getting used to. And he yeah. has adapted that system in the English, um, what do you call it, whether championship or in the English league. Um, okay. uh, Ofori yeah. is playing here in South Africa. The South African system is different. You kick the ball in. So Ofori, you can see, even with this team that we were, this country we were playing with, he was panicking. He was yeah. trying to show that he's confident by talking and all those things, but he was panicking. So I'm going to use uh, Walcott there. Now I'm going to bench this guy. What is his name? Amate. If you can be in let's just uh, this uh, club of yours, and they will bench you and play in Didi, a midfielder, <laughs> as a defender, whilst you're on the bench, then you have a problem. He's playing. He's acting like John Boy. He's the boss and all those things, but he's not doing the job. So I'm going to go with the same three back system, play um, what do you call it? Edu. Um, what is uh, the guy, the fair guy's name who is playing in uh, France? Chiku. Yes, and I'll play um, Salusu. Okay. And I'll play Salusu. And on the, um, I'll play um, Tariq. And I'll pr play this guy. Uh, what is his name? Um, Jeremy, this guy we are chasing from, he, he, he wanted a caller from Poland. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yes, I will go for that guy if he is available for Ghana. But if okay. he is not, then I'll go with Gideon. Reason being, we need attacking minded players. Even on the right wing or on the left wing. Um, wingers who can create chances not take the ball backwards every time. That's what I see from uh, what we call Gideon. He's always taking the ball back. He's always taking the ball back. And in the midfield, I'll go with Pate. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry today, but we might call Wakasu again. We might call Wakasu again. Because hey, he's the Wakasu. only player that we can rely <laughs> on when it comes to making the dirty work. <laughs> we might call hey, a again. Hey, let me drink water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what that's what I feel. Looking at looking at looking at the players we have, Pate will be injured after the Portugal game. What do we have? What do we have after Pate? Um, we cannot rely on this guy, Baba and this, so we cannot Baba rely on that guy. That is the point. Mm -hmm. So we might rely on the old what wines again by right. going for what what pass. Okay. In front of them, I'll go with right. Dudu. Uh -huh. And um the front uh, the front three, I'll go with uh what is uh, the Chelsea guy who went to Liverpool if he's available. Uh -huh. Yes, or Dodge. And if Enketia is available, he will be playing in the middle. Wow. No Inyaki. Okay. And Inaki will be playing on the far right. Far right. Okay. Oh, okay. So he'll be a winger. But if uh what do you call it? Enketia is not available. Inaki will play, play in the middle, Jordan will replace him on the what? Far right. All right, all right. So this is my team. But I believe that Ghana, we have a lot of issues. Like corner kicks, we have to find a coach who can train Let's our assist. players Let's to play corner, simple corner, and free mm -hmm. kicks. 
Okay. And also the so that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Supreme Quartz, let me add you to the stream. Okay. okay. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. You can go. All right. So are you following Great. the discussion? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's hear you. All right. So, yeah, so what, what, what do you want to talk about first? Also, the man. Uh, we are in a very compromising position if we were to just sack him now or to, you know, revamp the technical Listen, team. Yeah. So I think we should just we should just stick with it. I think Otaro he has shown he, he does have tactics in his locker and he does know how to respond to opposition. Like, I think the games against Brazil and Nigeria were clear examples of that. So he has it in his locker. But I just have my concerns about how he's doing it part-time. I believe it affects how we coach most. I believe like, mm. that's his biggest problem. But at this point, you know, it's so it's so late. It's, I mean, how much is, the, is changing a coach going to, going to do? Is it really the right thing to do? Probably not. So I'm just going to maintain it for now. Otto, I believe, is the type of coach you have to give time to. And I believe I say that if you want to do a rebuild build, and then you have someone like Otto Ado in there, you don't just chop and change in, in the middle of a project. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah, dangerous it's either way, but I, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to stick with Otto Ado for now. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So, the Nicaragua game, the friendlies, your thoughts on Ghana going to the World Cup and possibly if you have your team you want to be facing, what you got? Okay. So... I have very serious concerns about the lack of team chemistry, about how yeah. players are not finding each other. But I've been trying to to look over the highlights of about of certain players. I picked up a lot of things. Firstly, I think Mohamed Kudus has actually come up about a bit more criticism than he should. And I didn't have this opinion until I watched his highlights from one of the YouTubers, I think his name is Dot K32. Shout out to him. And then I suddenly saw something. Even though he wasn't releasing the ball well, in the end, when he released the ball, it was still progressive. And I was quite surprised because I didn't remember seeing that in game. So that gave me a new perspective. And I, I realized that there were two key issues. It seemed that the players around him didn't seem to understand his movement. So they didn't know where to be. So the point where you say, okay, he must release the ball. But Inyaki Williams didn't know whether he should run the channel or whether he should just stand by and wait for a pass. Bukari didn't know what to do. Isaku was confused. Yeah. It was a bit of that. Right? So that was a bit of a problem. I think that team chemistry was a bit of a problem. So I also don't understand that, each other. Right, right, right. I also noticed that it seemed like it was a mentality issue. The players saw it was Nicaragua and they decided, you know what, we need to score goals. We need to, for lack of a better term, bum rush the opposition. So we're just going to force it into the net without, instead of going for a more calculated approach that, that goes with a certain system. So I think it was more of a psychological issue more than anything else. That, with that being said, I can't be certain that if we had, that if they had not had the mentality that things would have gone better. But I think perhaps we should ease off on, on being that aggressive with our criticism. Okay. We are we are probably one of the weakest teams in the tournament. We are definitely the weakest. Yeah, team we are. It's not probably. We are. Yeah. <clears throat> According <laughs> to ranking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't. I don't talk about FIFA rankings. FIFA rankings. Are all right. Totally all right. Nice. We're stronger than Qatar and Saudi Arabia, for sure. Okay. But we're still weak. weak. Um, but we should lower our expectations. I've been saying for a while. If we make the round of sixteen, in I'm satisfied. But. I also say that we shouldn't go and disgrace ourselves. We shouldn't be drinking five goals every game. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. If I see like certain progression in our game, I'd, I'd be satisfied because then you 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 have more time for the players to gel in the Afcon qualifiers and more friendlies. And then all of a sudden, by the time of the next Afcon, you'll have a formidable squad with more chemistry, with better players. Mm-hmm. And then you know from that point, that's where you make your judgments. But if we end up drinking five goals every game, then of course you can't really say there's much progression. So that's my biggest problem. But yes, that's generally how I feel. Anyway, so let, let me ask you on this starting lineup. Yeah, uh-huh, exactly. Okay. 
goalkeeper, I want to wait until the Switzerland game to really be, be sure of anything. <laughs> I thought before but, but right now, right now, if we are to to put you on the line and say right now we are going to play the game, what who are you picking? Based on what I'm, I'm picking right a four. I think okay. I'm picking a four. I feel like he has a bit more leadership to his game. There's a there's lots more instructions that he's barking to to teammates, which I feel will help him. I, I think I've said before that what I watch him regularly. I believe he's a much better shot stopper than Walcott, which for me is the most important aspect of goalkeeping. I don't know if other people might agree. And I think that the the ball playing aspect is something that mm. we can easily fix. It, what do I mean? Okay, by so this? It. Yeah. No, no, not not even that. Let's just not include the goal. Change our goal. strategy not to include that. Right, exactly. Like notice okay. how the Odbot didn't have to do that much ball playing, did he? You know, against Japan. But then again, there's a school of thought that Walakot's distribution might be better. So how do you? So it's, it's okay. I watched the friend, a certain friend, Walakot, play for his club, and I remember he made a big mistake, big in in that particular game in terms of ball playing. So I don't think either of them are particularly good in that aspect anyway. So I, I just so say to be yeah. avoided, this is not. I want, to, I, want to internet, I want to internet for only 30 right, seconds. Sure. Okay, if sure. we are talking about ball distribution, I don't think Wallacott is the best in the team. We can talk about, um, you know, Amanaf um, and also the other goalkeeper. What's his name? Uh, oh, Atiziki. Atiziki, yeah, I think they are better on the ball than, than Wallacott. So we should think about the keeper, the number of balls he can save, and forget about that kind of play. If you want to stick with it, it will be like the Mendy's own. So please mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, mm, I okay. agree with you. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. That's I, I share the same sentiments. My Nathan Regine, I thought, was very good on the ball against Chile. But you don't really want to be starting him in the post because you know if he's gonna face a shot that's quality, he might he might mess up. Yeah. So I feel for he probably is the best, but I do want to wait till the Switzerland game. But yeah, right. I'll stick with four for now. I want to go over battery setup, Salisu Jiku Amate. I'd say yep. Amate's position is most up for grabs out of the three. I think Salus and Jiku are fixed. Amate is most up for grabs, but since we didn't really give other defenders a chance, I mean... Yeah, I'll that's my it. problem Bro. there again. Two sleek subs. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see a bit of Adu. Another player I'm a big fan of is Abdul Mumin, but Otaro didn't call him. You know, some people call, are talking about Patrick Pfeiffer. Some people are talking about Stephen Ambrosius. We didn't really give them a chance. So for now... I felt Amate's game improved when we went to a back three, so I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. With left wing back, I'm going to be controversial here. I'm sticking with Baba Rama. I was not impressed with Gideon Minter's game at all. I felt his crossing was poor. I felt his defending was suspect. It, I felt like he, he was generally just weak in all facets of the game. You know, Baba Rama, at least while well, he struggled defensively, in the second half, I thought when Salisu was covering, covering him, he was very good at crossing the ball. In fact, I recall there was a point where I think two Brazilian players were charging in order to make sure he stopped he stopped the cross. That shows how dangerous they, they saw it. And I believe yeah. that's something that we, that we could employ. Something I'm right. also saying is we should probably, if we want to use a back three, we should probably model our game to be similar to Serbia, to Serbian national team. I feel like they've really perfected it. And I feel like if we model a game like that, I feel like it would be the best thing to do. I feel like if, if you, if any of you have time, have a look at Serbia's games. I feel it's the best way to model it. And their left wing back is Philippe Kostic, a brilliant cross of the ball. So stylistically, Raman's probably the best choice. Okay, that's right. Just, right wing back, I think it's obvious, Terry Glamte. Um, Dennis Odoi, he barely adds anything offensively. We, I feel Terry Glamte is going to bring a bit more energy, and I believe his pace will help us against pacey wings. You know, while Dennis Odoi will struggle in that aspect. So in a wing, that goes to midfield. Wings, midfield. Midfield. Thomas Partey, he's a mainstay, guaranteed. But next to him, I think we have a dilemma. And again, I'm not sure who, who you pick because other players never really got much of a chance. But I'm going to go for a safe choice from someone I've seen in the national team. I'll go for Elisha Wusu. But he's okay. someone who has generally played in a back three system, if you watch him for, for Shins. And yeah. 
felt like that game against Nigeria, those, that cameo against Brazil was pretty good. Of course, part A, he has to be in the team. Then I'd, put in, I'd go for a number 10, and I'll, I'll say you one know, minus. Okay. Even if you might co- might complain about the fact that he was dribbling for too long, if you watch the highlights again, it was uh-huh. still true that some of our best, yeah. uh, of our best his chances went through him. Inyaki Williams' Williams chance that he missed, it happened from Kudus driving the ball forward, then he laid it off to Bukhari, and I think Bukhari just had a, a simple role go to Inyaki Williams. It was, it was things like that, and I think he played Bukhari through on goal a few times as well. It's just a matter of talking to him. And I believe that player is the most talented player in our squad. It's I believe it's foolish to really to to, to you know the way we propped him up after the way he was getting on the bench on Ajax and then he came off. How can you he's I believe it's a situation that's fixable. You can't you can't just ignore his qualities just because it was, you know, in a certain game, perhaps his mindset was a bit wrong. So for me, he's he's in that free way. Then up front, I'm going to have Inyaki Williams and Andre Ayu. Andre Ayu, he's the captain. And one thing I wanted to talk about is set pieces. Is Andre Ayu, when he had our best chance against Brazil, he headed the ball. And I believe. Best chance. Our, yeah, our best chance of the game. That was from a corner. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's already something. I believe yeah. he'll also take defenders away from Inyaki Williams, which will, which will give him the space to run the channels was to run into space to receive the ball. Oh, yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention on Kudus. Okay. In the Brazil game, notice how all of Inaki Williams' shots came from apart from Kudus. Yeah. I think it's just a fool for thought. But yeah, so, so that'll be my thing. Kudus is five. still our best player. Thank you. Yes, that's so right. our best player. He's, he's playing well. Uh, team understanding and chemistry is also an issue. So we have to be patient a bit there on that front. Yeah. Thank you so much, Supreme. Right. Thank you very much for having me. Andre, you are next. I think you'll be the last one for today. Then we end the stream. Andre. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Welcome. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where to start. You know, our Black Stars issue. Let me guide you. Let me let me guide you through it. <laughs> <laughs> First off, is Otuado the man and is the part-time role people are calling him an issue? Um I don't think we have a choice. Yeah, is the issue. I think at this point, I've tried to scramble in my brain and see mm, what can we do mm. at this particular point. But all, all, all jokes aside, there's nothing we can do, so yeah. it's too late. So we have to deal with it. Be, being part time as a nation, I think after the Nigeria game, I think we ran off of vibes, and even me, <laughs> I'm guilty. <laughs> to it. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm guilty to it because uh, beforehand, you know the whole. GFA versus president argument, Chris yeah. Hutton. Yeah. I ran off of vibes. I thought, yeah, honestly, yeah. that, you know what, Otto Addo shamed me, I'm wrong, etc., etc. But beforehand, if you put two, both of them side by side with each other, Chris Hutton and yeah, Otto Addo, one, let's, yeah. let's be honest. And I think we undersold our nation because this is the Black Stars. This is, this is our nation's team. This is what we all support. And all jokes aside, you have to get somebody who's qualified. England would never uh, appoint somebody who's a part-time manager yeah, or manager, um, part-time yeah. coach. He has never managed a team before for your yeah, national yeah. team. Yeah, so I think we all were guilty of running off of vibes after that Nigeria game and thinking, yes, yeah. you know, he's got us, he shamed us, etc. Because we're seeing it now. And it's not good enough, if we all be honest with ourselves. It's not good enough. So to answer your question on that, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. So we have to deal with it and make the best of the situation. All right. Thoughts on the friendlies and going forward, optimism ahead of World Cup? Hey, optimism, that's an interesting one. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, unfortunately, I agree with the callers that um, came in just before Henry and the last guy in particular. I literally agreed with all the points that he made. Um, I was very disappointed, if I'll be honest. The main um, disappointment, I would have to say, is the fact that we never got to see all these players that he yeah, called. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ambrosius, I have never seen him play in my life, but I was expecting to see him in the second game. If we be honest yeah. with ourselves, we know Daniel Marte already. Did we need yeah. to see him for 90 minutes in that game? No, we did not. No, we didn't. So what did we gain from him playing 90 minutes and then you kick the player on the bench? So I'm now trying to, thinking in my head, did you just bring him for the sake of bringing him? Was there something behind the scenes? Like, what, what was the point? Yeah. You understand? And now, if we as Ghanaians see him now in the World Cup squad, what are we going to say to ourselves? That, that is just very confused. 
So that yeah. didn't make sense to me. Joseph Addo, I've seen that he's really good with the jamma with the drums. I don't know if that's not why we call him up because <laughs> all jokes aside, he's been getting he I'm not a big fan. The last time I saw him play for Ghana, I wasn't impressed, but he seems to get yeah. pull-ups all the time. Why are you calling him up if you're not even going to give him a chance to play? I know he play. Play. Yeah, like I mean, he plays week in, week out in the top league in La Liga. He must be good in some way, shape, or form. He hasn't impressed for Ghana, but I believe that's due to nerves, etc. What more than give him confidence against Nicaragua? So we yeah, can see what sure. he can do. I mean, so again, that's in two defenders there we never got to see. Can he honestly look in each Ghanaian's eyes and tell us that honestly, why did he bring on Jordan and Andre in that game in the last few minutes? It doesn't make sense. And also, I think he's disrespecting the Ghana League, if I'll be honest with the way he's treating the free Ebanya. Because, again, really and truly, you brought him on for 30 seconds. You might as well have kept him on the bench. There's no point of... Like, that is just disrespectful, really and truly. And then the player, Ransford Yeboa, I eagerly yeah. asked him to see him. You brought him on for 10 minutes. And to be fair, in those 10 minutes, if you looked intricately in the game, the little things he did, he actually looked like he's actually all right. But we never got to see him properly because you didn't give him yeah. enough time. All jokes aside as well, we're not being serious. If we be honest, as much as Fatu scored, it actually hurt me that he scored because it blinds people. If you really look at it, he's not ready. The goals changes a lot and masks a lot. <laughs> if we be honest, really watch him in the game. I love the boy. I think he'll, he'll do well in the future, but he's not ready. And if we're a serious nation, he is not somebody we should, put, should be taking to the World Cup at the expense of players like Ashimiru and players that are playing week in, week out at top teams. Uh, this is not right. It's not right. But we'll see him in the World Cup. We all know within yeah, ourselves he'll, yeah. be there. he'll be there. So stuff like that. And then secondly, the only thing that disappointed me in the friendly as well is the manager is not allowing the players to flourish. You're playing them in the wrong positions. I'm not the biggest Jordan IU fan, but all jokes aside, if Patrick Vieira can see something in him and he's playing week in, week out in the Premier League on the right wing doing a job, where he's very defensive, up and down, up and down, and serving the strikers. He's doing a job at a Premier League team. I can't take that away from him. Why do we consistently always play him on the left? How does that make sense? Because it's different. All jokes aside, each wing is different, and he's not producing on the left. If you be honest, he's not producing on the left. Uh, yes, dropping down for fouls, etc. but that's all we're praising him for. And that's not good enough, to be honest. You played Kamal Dean out of position and played him on the right, and you played right. Jordan on the left. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, fine. Maybe they're starting like this. Now, modern day football, they tend to switch 20 switch, minutes. Yeah. But it was we like didn't, that. It we didn't, didn't see anything. And then the same thing. My boy, Usman Bukhari, who I've been following this whole season, I've been so happy he's scoring week in, week out. Finally, maybe somebody can include in, in, in this starting lineup. You play them on the left when he's making inroads on the right. And doing, I, I'm like, I'm again in my head. I'm thinking to myself, okay, Fatu is not really doing anything in this game. Yes, he scored, but again, if you're really honest with yourself, you know he didn't really play well. You didn't even give Usman even 20 minutes on the position that he scored all these goals and assists this season for him to at least shine a little bit. I'm just like, and you watch again, Kudus Mohammed. It's the same argument with Amati. We did not need to see him for nearly 90 minutes in that game. Yeah, he's, yeah we know what he's capable of. Okay. Why can't we see some of these so-called new players that you're bringing? And the last thing that I thought to myself is I said, if I'm one of these players that the Ghana FA is trying to convince and beg me to come and join on board, looking at these two friendlies, all jokes. Uh, before, when Nico switched to Spain and he played the first game, I was wishing all bad things possible, apart from obviously injury. Yeah, but then I sat there and thought to myself, when he's going back to sit with his brother and they discuss, oh, they're international friendly, only one man is really going to be really happy with his decision currently, as we sit there. I mean, look Look at what we actually went. It was not a good audition for any half and half, let's say somebody's half English and half guy. No, there was not a good audition, really and truly. It was quite sad to see. The manager, very slow with his substitutions. You look at it and say, yes, the previous caller, um, um, a couple of callers ago said, yes, he's passionate and so forth. Yes, he's passionate. But all jokes aside, you can be passionate, but what are you doing about it? You're standing there and we're watching players that we don't need to see and you're parading them around, running up and down, doing absolutely nothing. Nicaragua, 1-0, gone. I mean, and we had players. So to me, it means maybe you didn't believe in those players that you called up. Then my second question is, why are you calling those players at the expense of players that are doing well, which we all know? We've got a striker apparently in the Portuguese, Portuguese league who's top scorer, who scored two goals against Porto this season. Why hasn't he been given the chance when we're struggling for goals up front? I mean, there's so many mistakes that are going on, but what can we do? So, yeah, to answer your question, it wasn't a great audition. There were so many mistakes. 
And yeah, mm -hmm. there's so many players that we didn't get to see and there's players that played that we've seen already. We know what they can do. And I still didn't get the answer to why did we see Andre and Jordan in the Nicaragua game 10 minutes to the end? It didn't make sense. <laughs> didn't make uh, sense. Let me end with this one for you. Mm -hmm. The goal thing position. There's this argument to Fori, Wallacott, where do you stand? Uh, if you remember what I said the other day, yeah, yeah. I said, <laughs> I said to me, Wallacott's disappointed me. But you know, the good thing is when you get to see somebody else, then you get to slightly understand certain things. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I said to you last time that I wanted to see Manaf because the last time I saw Richard Ofori, I wasn't impressed. And to be fair, I think you, what I learned from this game is players listen to what we say. And you can yeah, see, they do. They yeah, do. Was, he was talking <laughs> a lot. So I could see that one of the things that Wallopo was criticized for was he wasn't, he, he doesn't communicate. So I could he see doesn't. that Richard was talking a lot. However, that's the previous caller who I could tell has the same analytical mind. He's very nervous and his kicking is a big, big problem. Ofori doesn't instill confidence in me. He still gives me the same sort of nerves. It might be slightly different to Wallopo, but both of them don't give me confidence. I haven't seen Manaf enough. So the problem is the manager has not used these games. Sometimes you can use some of those qualifier games against the easier teams to also audition players so you can know what you're yeah. doing. If you've got a, a future plan. We haven't seen enough players. So I've got to see Ofori today. And to be fair, out of the two, I would pick Wallacott. And that even shocks me because after watching that Brazil game, there was no way I would have ever picked Wallacott. <laughs> <laughs> but me, I can only go by what I've seen. So all, all jokes aside, I'd go with Manaf based on that Kieran Cup. But the previous caller said something about if a good shot is done against um, uh, Manaf, it will go in. I don't know. And the sad thing is, I don't know because we haven't seen enough of the players. It's the same players making the same mistakes since he's come. The results haven't been good, but we're seeing the same players. Isn't that a problem? When there's other players yeah. that are playing in Europe oh, and doing what? Well, why can't we see them too? It's the same players all the time. And I think that's our biggest problem. So we just have to hope and pray. You know, we're a prayerful nation. We have to pray that, you know, God, <laughs> God is in control. And, 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 and manage our expectations, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So that, that's all yeah. I've got to say. But yeah, it's been very disappointing. And lastly, I would say Kudus, my boy. He's got all the talent in the world. And I actually agree. I've done the same thing as the previous caller. I watched the highlight and it changed my perspective that he actually created a lot of chances, even in that Nicaragua game, as much as he got insulted in that. But you have to pass the ball early. Inaki made quality. It's not, it's not about passing it, but the timing of the pass as well. Yeah, I think he's making the runs where if you runs, slip yeah. through, he's in on goal. That's the type of striker Inaki is. He's going to align himself with the centre back. And if you slip him through, it's a race and that's over. We know what he will yeah. do. The only other thing I would say is there are players that are, it's very late, but there's players that we need to consider. Amate hasn't also instilled confidence in me. And if we're playing three at the back, I really think we need to give Abdul Mumin a chance. I don't know why. For some reason, we had a series where we were calling him up, didn't give him a chance. Didn't give him a chance. Really. I was surprised. Yeah. Whereas I've been watching him from Portugal to now Spain. He's a good defender. So I personally would have him, Salisu, Jiku at the back. I'd have Schlerp, as I said to you last time, I think Schlerp is better than both Gideon and um, Baba. And, and also, Baba, I'm just yeah. going to say one last point. In regards to Gideon, I said that I'd pick Gideon over Baba. I'm not Baba's biggest fan at all. But I understand now why he is now in, in what looks like he's ahead of Gideon. Gideon, all he does was he's a safe player. But his back passes, safe. He looks cute, but he's actually not really giving you much going forward. Whereas at least <laughs> Baba, he's a little bit more elaborate. Practice. Yeah, and with Salisu there protecting him, if you play a back five, he's actually all right. I think he's more of a wing back than he's a left back. So I would play Schlepp over both of them if we can get him. Lamptey right wing back. Uh, again, I believe that players have actually become better by not playing in these series of two games. So I would go with Awusu and I'd go with Partey. Partey. I'd play Kudu still in front of them. And then I would go with Semenyo and Inaki Williams would be my, my two up front. Mm. Alternatively, right. if I was playing a 4 2 3 1, I would go with Lamti, Jiku, Salisu, Schlerp. I would go with either Owusu or Tre and Partey. On the right, I would play Williams. I would play Kudus in the AM position. I would beg Hudson and Doi to please come through and play on the left for us. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then it will be Enketia, who we also need to beg and play up front. So I'd have Williams on the right and Ketia up front, Hudson and Doi on the left. Kudus as the AM and Partey and either Usu or Trev um, beside or Partey. That's what I would do. Okay. What a way to wrap it today. Yeah. Thank you, Andre. Thank no you problem. so much for your inputs.
So we've done one and a half hours. I think it's time to wrap up. Before we do that, uh, a word to Ghanaians who are hoping the Black Stars make it out of the knockout stages from my two uh, YouTube buddies here. I'll start with Manuel. Uh, what should okay. Ghanaians expect? Can we make it into the knockout phase? Can we make it out of the group? The top two will go through to the knockout phases. Uh, with, with what they've shown us now, I don't think we can make it. And I will advise Ghanaians to limit their expectations also. And um, I think there's more work to be done. Yeah, yeah, actually, there's more work to be done. Yeah, we need we need a lot of work. And today I saw a post from Baba Rahman and he admitted it himself that there's more work to, to be done. And so, that they will get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, they will get there. They will get there. So I feel we should lower expectations for them and we should support them. I feel maybe when things are done right yeah we can progress but for now we shouldn't expect much from them yeah also any any words of encouragement final words <laughs> what should we expect what should fans should they still be optimistic positive can we make it out of the group yeah i think we can make it out of the group um the Ghana's team doesn't need a lot of changes we need some few right decisions to be made and I think we can make it out of the group. It's, you know, well, if you look at a World Cup, it will be just too big for you. But you have to take it game after game. If you're able to plan war against Portugal, after Portugal, we take our time to plan war against the next opponent. We take our time war to plan against the next opponent. I think we can do well. And we shouldn't forget, Ghana, we've not been bad at World Cups that we've represented. And we can actually... Um, forget about what happened in Brazil 2014. That is, I think, the worst so far. Yes. yes. But if, you, if we can take inspiration from 2006, 2010, before the World Cup, we played for any matches. We didn't do well. Ghanaians yeah. were angry like this at that time. I think I was a kid. And I, like, we, 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 we were so down. But we yeah. got into the tournament and we, we, we actually surprised the world. So I think we can do well. If you plan well, take it game after game, calculate the number of points we need to qualify we can do it. We can do it. We shouldn't even play ourselves. This is a tournament. This is not, um, you know, a league season. This is a tournament. Tournament, we must expect shocks. And I think if things are done right, Ghana, we can shock the world as well. All right. Thank you, Osikeni. As he said, both of them, cautious optimism. Osikeni, however, is more optimistic mm -hmm. than Emmanuel. He feels we should lower expectations. <laughs> and he says, if the right things are done, we will get through to the round of 16 where we could possibly be facing brazil once again so sure. <laughs> <that'll be> <laughs> yeah also it will be interesting to see what <laughs> happens there and we are playing switzerland in a friendly so a great great fixtures there for by the fa for us so that has been it for today thank you guys for joining us everyone that contributed in the video uh, we'll do this another time thank you so much have a great night okay. wherever okay. you are all right. Bye. Nice. Yeah, I appreciate it.